When I was growing up, my memory would seem to suggest that it snowed every winter, but as I really think about it, it probably only snowed um, enough for us kids to get out of school a couple times. But I can remember when I was about nine or 10, that it snowed enough that not only did we get out of school, but they actually shut down the hill on which I lived. If you're familiar with Sweet Home, if you're from around here, um, we grew up on the corner of Third and Elm. And there's a hill on both sides. And what they did was the city shut down both of those streets. And as I recall, all day, kids and families from all over town would bring their tubes and their sleds and have fun out there. And my mom actually, in our basement, which was accessible from the outside, made a warming station with hot chocolate. And I can remember my friends and I going down there and having hot chocolate, getting warm, and heading back out. But there was another way we would stay warm as we were heading up and down those slopes. My brothers and some other teenagers in town, they collected a bunch of wood and made this big fire at the very top of Third and Elm here in Sweet Home. In fact, you can go up there, as I've taken many of my youth groupers over the years and forced them to look at my childhood memory, and you can actually see the patch job from 45 years ago from the asphalt that was burned from the result of the heat of that fire. Because as we know, fire produces heat and heat has this incredible power. Heat and fire is actually a theme that we see throughout Scripture, throughout the Old Testament and into the New Testament. And whenever we see this, it's usually associated with times of trials and troubles and tribulations. And I think it was my mom who years ago said to me that when it comes to times of trouble, we're either in the middle of a time of trouble, we're coming out of one, or we're just about ready to enter one, that that's actually the truth of life that all of us are going to encounter these seasons. And so if that's true, how we view these trials and troubles, it actually has the ability to shape our entire lives. But as believers, we've been giving an insight. We've been provided this look behind the curtain, if you will, at how we're to view these things. Not only how we're to um, be able to navigate these times of tribulation, the troubles, but actually how we can benefit from them. And it all begins with having a different perspective. The definition for tribulation is a time of trouble or suffering. And that's surely accurate. We've all come to experience those times. But as a believer, we know that that is actually, when you look behind the curtain, incomplete. You see, as a believer, we know the more accurate definition would be a time of trouble or suffering, which reveals my conduct or my character. As a football coach, track coach, coach throughout my life, I've really come to embrace that idea that I tell my athletes and parents even, and myself, that sports, they may actually, um, they may build character. I hope they do. But far more often I see the truth is it reveals character, that the heat of competition can bring out our flaws. It can bring out the things that we need to work on, the things we try to keep hidden. So understanding that, that heat, that trials and tribulations actually can be beneficial because they reveal our conduct and our character, adding that to your view of these seasons all of us will find ourselves in repeatedly, well, it changes everything. So often it seems, even now in this season, that we're simply bystanders to the events of our own life, that everything is pushing us around. The winds of circumstance just push us left and right, to and fro, and we have nothing we can do, but actually adding this to our viewpoint, it can actually give us the power to focus, the ability to um, work on things, to give us a purpose during times of uncertainty. This theme is actually referred to throughout Scripture of heat being applied and giving rise to flaws in our conduct, in our character, our hearts, um, cracks actually. This theme in Scripture is referred to as the refiner's fire. And the refiner's fire is this allusion to, allusion to, it alludes to the goldsmith and how he would remove the impurities from gold to make it pure. And it was this process by which he would put the, the gold in its unrefined state under tremendous heat. And as the heat was subjected to this gold, all the impurities would rise to the surface. 
And what he would do is, using an instrument, he would just remove and scrape off the impurities. And it didn't just happen in one try. There was this cycle of creating heat, subjecting this gold to heat, and then the refiner, the goldsmith, would continually remove the impurities from the top. And what it would leave would be this gold in all of its beauty and its pure state. And it's the same with us, that these times of trials and troubles, it subjects us to heat and it reveals our flaws. And there's this idea that there's two things that we need to focus on. Not only does it reveal our flaws, seasons of times and trials, when the heat is applied and what comes out of our mouth <laughs> reveals our heart and the cracks in it, these flaws and impurities, it doesn't just reveal them, it gives us an opportunity to address what the heat has revealed. Because tests, well, they always reveal something. I have a friend who was having heart issues. And so he went to the doctor and they put him through a stress test. And what the stress test um, was actually, what it did was they put him on a treadmill and they did something that seems counterintuitive to someone with a heart condition, but they just sped up the treadmill and they increased the angle. And what they were trying to do was, they were trying to see by putting him into discomfort and stress, they were gauging how his heart would react because they knew that by subjecting his heart to discomfort and to stress, it would provide a true and accurate result of the health of his heart. And he needed to know that. He embraced that test. He signed up for that test because he knew that by understanding the true health of his heart, he could address those issues and he could live this abundant life because truth is always our friend. And I have some good news for all of us today that we are all about to read the test results of a time that our heart has been put into of stress and discomfort. We're all encountering a trial right now and you're about to, or you have already, or you're currently, while well, you're reading the test results. And that's the truth. What you're seeing is the truth of your heart. What I'm seeing are the true results of my heart in a time of stress and discomfort. But the truth is actually, it's encouraging. You see, there is no growth without struggle. That's just the truth. A caterpillar and a butterfly have the exact same DNA. But what's different? Well, what's different is when the caterpillar goes into this chrysalis, it undergoes a time of transformation. But actually, what we now know through subjecting it to all kinds of tests, this chrysalis, is there's heat in that chrysalis and there's a struggle. And actually, sometimes people who have wanted to decrease the struggle of this caterpillar, they've actually cut holes in the chrysalis to allow the caterpillar to escape without struggle. What they've seen is the caterpillar, who's now actually turned into a butterfly, but it's a butterfly who doesn't have the strength to fly. They've seen this thing tumble to the ground and die. Struggles are necessary for growth. And the difference between a caterpillar and a beautiful butterfly is simply the butterfly embraced the struggle. So I just want to leave you guys with this encouragement this week. Read the test results. The test results are the truth. The truth is always our friend. And embracing the struggle is the best thing we could all do because it's very clear. There is no growth without struggle. I would ask you guys to pray this week, pray for me, pray for all of the people in your lives because this time of heat, this time of struggle, well, it's providing some pretty stressful information for people to read. But like any test result, you can only begin to heal when you embrace the truth.